everybody, it's a Treehouse Takeover! Yeah! <laughs> hey kids, welcome to the Treehouse! I'm loving this Rooted in Redemption series. It's so cool to study through the book of Genesis. I agree, Miss Savannah. You know, last week we learned all about God's mercy and when he protected Noah and his family from the flood and gave us a rainbow, a promise in the sky to remind us that he will never do that again. Yeah, Mr. Cole, it reminds me of last week's big idea. We're rooted in God's mercy. Hey, what do you say we learn about today's big idea and points for today? Let's check out what's the point with our friends Brock and Sebastian. Okay, let's go. Hey everyone, um, Brock, you are so loud. Any louder and I may need new eardrums. Sorry about that. I was at the tractor pulling competition this past week and I just haven't adjusted quite yet back. Tractor pulling? Is that like NASCAR for tractors? It is the exact opposite of that. It's when you get a huge tractor that has a loud engine that pulls heavy, heavy things in a straight line. Um. Okay, Brock, that seems super cool. <laughs> Anyways, it's my first time on What's the Point, and I've heard that we have some points that go along with today's lesson on Abraham. Yeah, we do. Uh, we normally start off with the big idea. The big idea for today is we are rooted in faith. Wow, that's a great big idea. Abraham received the promises of God by faith. We too receive salvation through faith in Jesus. So what are the points for today, Brock? Point number one is, have faith in God's promises. God always follows through and does what he says he is going to do. We have faith in what he has promised. We can trust everything God has said in his word, the Bible. What's the next point, Brock? Point number two is, have faith in God's timing. That can sometimes be really hard to do. God doesn't always do things when we would choose for him to do them. We have to trust that God's timing is better than ours and that he will do the right thing and at the right time. Now, is that all the stuff we have to share, Brock? No, 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 no. I have a question for you and everyone watching. <laughs> Today's question of the day is, have faith in God's what? A, son, B, tractor, or C, hay bale? Those are some pretty silly answers there, Brock. The answer is definitely A. We have faith in God's son, Jesus. He is the one who came, lived a sinless life, and died for us on a cross. And the great news is, he didn't stay dead. When we put our faith in him and what he did on the cross, we have eternal life with him in heaven. It was great being with you today, Brock. Oh, it was fantastic being with you too, Mr. Sebastian. Well, now that we have what's the point done for today, we can talk all about the best types of pulling tractors. I typically love the big green tractors.
That is an awesome big idea. We are rooted in faith. Yeah, Mr. Cole. I know faith is something that we all need, but God makes it easy to trust in him. Hey, you know, last week, Hermit was going around to all the karaoke tree houses that Mac the Rack had popping up and the tree house president was pretty upset. Yeah, he was, but he showed mercy even though it wasn't deserved. You're right, he did. What do you say we see how our treehouse friends are doing today? Great idea, let's go. All right, uh, Tony, so I've, I've got a big question for you. Very philosophical question. Do you prefer the, um, the crunchy chocolate covered worms or the, uh, the soft chewy gummy worms covered in nerds? Oh, I'm more of a texture guy, so I like the crunchy worms for sure. Oh, oh I, I like the chocolate covered oh. worms. Oh. Hey, Hermit, Tony, I haven't seen you guys in a little bit. What's Mr. going on around here? We missed you last week. Where were you? Uh, I was at student camp. It was a lot of fun, almost as much fun as kids camp. It's really similar, except everybody's just a little bit taller and a little bit smellier. Oh, man. What happened around here? Oh, you you won't believe it. It was, it was a pretty normal week. I mean, if you don't count, um, Miss Lauren's terrible British accent. I mean, it was it was truly awful, Mr. I'm Sweden. not worried about that. I, yeah. I felt really bad for the British people. I almost wrote an apology to the Queen herself. It was it was it was it was uh it was bad. And then, oh my goodness, I almost forgot the president had to chop down a whole bunch of tree houses because they were karaoke. Wait a minute, houses. wait a minute, wait a minute. And it was Mac the Rat trying to fool all of us, but other than that, it's pretty chewy. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Tony, is that true? Did the president actually cut down tree houses? Yeah, it was crazy, but the good thing was those tree houses, they were all about loving yourself and serving yourself, but uh, the president saved us from Mac the Rack once again. Yeah, that's right. Oh, I see. So Mac the Rack created a bunch of tree houses and the president wiped them out. Is that what happened? Mm-hmm. That makes a lot of sense. But you know what? I came back from student camp. I am so excited. We did so much stuff last week. I am tired of sitting around here in the treehouse. Why don't we come up with some love all and serve all projects? Oh, I love that idea. I, I cannot tell you what a great idea that is. Uh, uh, Tony, what do you think? Is that a good idea? Yeah, I, I love the idea, too, as long as... There's no hermit singing, no karaoke, no vo vocal chords from her. Nothing of nothing of that stuff. Oh, that, that's personal, man. Maybe we can make this just a work day hermit and not a singing work day. Would that be okay? Um, okay, as long as we're helping people and letting people and serving all, I can do that. You know, I was thinking. I walked past walked past Miss Nesbitt's house on the yeah. way here, and her grass was super high. It, you know, the grass is growing really fast this time of year. What if we went over there and, like, cleaned up her yard? I mean, that's an easy project we can do all the time, and that would really make me feel good. Yeah, Tony, you can pick up the sticks, and then I can help uh, pick up uh, and, and all the other stuff and make sure all the bugs are gone from her yard and stuff. That sounds like a good idea. Come it's on, guys, idea. let's go. Yeah, I think that's good. Hold, you know what? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Something's happening what? here. Oh, why are we not I, leaving? I'm getting an email oh. here. Miss Nesbitt sent you an email? <laughs> no, Miss Nesbitt does not send an email. No, it's from the president. Um... Yeah, yes, it is from the president. It looks very Ooh, important. What's it say, Mr. Steven? What's it say? Hold on, let me get my president voice going. Greetings, my treehouse friends. This is your president emailing you. Why, well, Mr. Steven, you sound just like the president. Permit, That's permit. Just, let him impressive. read. Oh, sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry. Go Please ahead. Please don't Please. interrupt. This sorry, is very sorry. important. Sorry, I'm sorry. I am emailing you because I wanted to tell you that I am so very proud of you that you did not take what the karaoke treehouses were offering and were obedient to me. Because of your obedience, to me, I have found favor with your treehouse and other treehouses that chose to trust me. Also, for all the treehouses that obeyed me, I'm going to multiply them. I have a plan to start 100 treehouses. 100? I... Stop interrupting. Oh, sorry, sorry. <clears throat> Stop interrupting. Sorry, sorry, oh, sorry, sorry. Now I'm all messed up. Um, 100 treehouses. And I need you, my treehouse friends, to build them. I will be providing the deeds to the trees and will be sending you supplies and blueprints in order for you to build them. A package is being delivered as I type, and will have everything you need. Remember, I will always fulfill my promises to you, no matter the circumstance. I will be with you, and I will not let you down. Godspeed, my treehouse friends. Did he say 100 treehouses? You know, I wouldn't call myself optimistic, you know, per se, but 100 is a huge number. Wow, well, look at you, Tony, using all those big words, and I don't think anybody else would ever call you optimistic either. I mean... You've really, really been trying to expand your uh, your brain and better yourself with that uh, word of day calendar, haven't you, uh, Tony? But but you're right. I agree, Tony. This is this, 100 is a lot. I'm not sure we can do this. I mean, I mean, my little legs can only hop so many times a day in 100 treehouses. That's a lot of treehouses. Yep, you guys are right. 100's a lot. Let's just give up. We're not even going to do one. I think that's easier. Wait. Wait, are you serious? Wait, are you serious? No, of course <laughs> not. That's ridiculous. The president told us he's going to give us everything we need in order to build 100 treehouses. So you know what we're going to do? We're going to build 100 treehouses. It's not very complicated. Well, you're, you're right, well, Mr. Steven. You, yeah. we, we should never doubt the president. I know 100 is a huge number, but we can still trust him, right? 
Yeah, yeah, of course, Tony. Why are we even doubting? I mean, we just need to have patience and remember that the Trias president, he always comes through on his promises to us. Yeah, do we know when the, when these plans are going to get here, though? Mm, I'm yeah, not when sure. are they coming? Oh, oh they're right there. The hold door. on, hold on. Maybe that's the plans. Hold on, uh, plans. Oh, yep, here we go. All right, plans. Are those them? Are those the plans? Wow, wow look, look at them. They're up. fancy. What do, they like? what do they look like? Uh, they have, like, an official seal on them and all. Ooh. I don't know. Hold on, hold on. Are they big or they little? There's so many pages. Wow. Oh my goodness, look at it. They just wow. go on and on. Look at them, guys. Those there's a ton. Wow, there's Super a lot of plans. So These are exactly official. How to build a house. Hey, Bob, Bob, Mr. Steven, I mean, it looks really cool. And it, and it looks really detailed of how to build a tree house and all that stuff, like the president said. But um, are there any uh, deeds to the trees that tell us we own trees to build on them? No, that is the next step we need. So these are the plans. This tells us what to do, but we can't start until we have those deeds for the trees. You are 100% mm. right, Hermit. Um, you know, while we're waiting, why don't we go help Miss Nesbitt? You know, we can do a couple things here at the same time. I, I think that would be good. Are you guys ready to go, Mo? It's a great yeah, idea. I'm sure he'll be bringing the deeds any time now. Yeah, Hermit, you can start the lawnmower, right? Yeah, I can get a vroom, vroom. I, no, I can do it. It's not pretend starting. It's like for real. Oh, okay. Hey, man. When night has fallen, when fear is coming, still you're calling me. When faith is lost and my hope exhausted. You will be my strength When my mind says I'm not good enough God, you're enough for me Yeah, I've decided I'm not giving up But you won't give up on me You won't give up on me Your love is holding on and it won't let go I feel it breaking out like an echo Miss Emily. Hello, everyone. We're going to review our memory verse for our new series, Rooted in Redemption. 
And after that, we're gonna go twice with the motions. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. Genesis 17, seven. And I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and your offspring after you. That was great, Miss Kayla. Now, how about we all stand up and let's do it with the motions. Genesis 17, seven. And I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and your offspring after you. That was amazing, kids. Now we're gonna do it one more time, so let's make it your very best. Ready? Genesis 17, seven. And I will establish my covenant between me and you and your offspring after you throughout their generations for an everlasting covenant to be God to you and your offspring after you. Way to go, that was amazing. Keep practicing and I'll see you next week. Bye. Bye. Okay, I think I think we, we got some good love all serve all projects done. We cut the grass, we uh, went to Miss Nesbitt's yard and fixed it up. We got mm -hmm. rid of all the worms that, mm -hmm. that were infested. We, we did a lot of good stuff. Yeah, yeah, you did right. I, I helped with the, uh, the fly infestation at Mr. Bob's oh, yeah. house. And, um, well, I helped pressure wash the roof. That was a little scary there for a minute. There was a lot of pressure from that pressure washer. Uh, Tony yeah, Tony, you remember that? That was super funny. That right? was yeah, it was really hard. But guys, it's been three weeks since we got the blueprints for the tree houses. And uh, we've done all these Love All Survival projects. And then we still do not have the tree deeds that we need to actually build these tree houses. And I just don't think the president is going to come through and his promise to us. All right. I am tired of talking about this. The president said he would get what we needed and we just haven't received it yet. They will show up when they show up and we not one minute deeds. earlier. I don't know who's trusting. Deeds. You guys are so ridiculous. Yeah, right. who could that be at There the door? we go, maybe that's them right there. Let's go take a look. Oh, it's a big envelope, Mr. Steve. Oh, look, look, look at this. It says tree deed ah, line, Hermit. What do you think's in here? here? All right, let's see what we got. Are they, are they actually in there, though? I don't even know what a tree deed looks like. Do you guys know? I've no, I just know that means we own the tree. Oh, it looks like trees, of course. So look at this tree. Ooh. I think this is the one right down next to Miss Nesbitt's house. That one yeah, will look good with a nice tree house. Tree. Right here. And then there's this one. Ooh, and, that looks oh, my goodness, too. there's so many. Oh, well, look at the branches. I know those branches look really strong. Mr. I know they're everywhere. Wow, this is a lot of trees. Yeah, and a lot of like. Oh, those leaves are nice and luscious. Those are healthy they, trees, Mister. They Spinger. actually are nice and luscious. That's pretty good. That's yeah. Tony, Tony, have you ever seen any of those trees before while you've been flying around? Yeah, I, I recognize some of them. Some some of them have so many birds in there. It's going to be so easy to start some new tree houses in those trees. That's right. I think you're absolutely right, and there's there's enough for us to get started here. So I think that'll be good. You know, I, I finally realized something. I want to tell you all. Yeah. I, I don't know if you've ever said this before, but I think that we can finally trust the president. Yeah, I agree with Tony. I think we can finally trust him. What are you talking about? I say that every week. Why are you just now listening? Wait, you, you say that every single week? Yes. No. Oh. This is the first well, time I hear it. No. Yeah, I, I don't remember that part. But you know what? This makes me feel really good inside. I, you know what it makes me want to do, Tony? Oh, no. Please don't say what I think you're going to say. Oh, I'm going to do it. <laughs> it's just so beautiful. <clears throat> and I think to myself... <sighs> I'm good. What a wonderful world. Tony, there's no need that for that, nice, right? right? There's, there's no need for that. Wow, Mr. Cole, can you believe that? I can't. I can't believe that, Miss Vanna. The president said that he was going to give the treehouse members the resources and the blueprints to build more and more treehouses. Even though the treehouse members had to wait a long time for the package to arrive, they had faith in the president and he followed through with his promise. And you know what? I can't wait to see what all the new treehouses look like. Me either, Mr. Cole. Hey, I really want to hear what Mr. Colin has to teach us today from the book of Genesis. Sounds great. Let's go. We got to see something really special take place in the treehouse today. The president came through on his promise and the treehouse members are going to start building 100 new treehouses all around the neighborhood. At first, it seemed like a crazy plan. It seemed like it took a while for the treehouse members to trust the president, especially when it took three whole weeks for them to receive the deeds to become the owners of all of these trees but the president still came through as he always does. 
What the president promises, the Treehouse members can have faith that he will come through. This reminds me of the story that we will be studying today in the Bible. And our big idea is we are rooted in faith. Now, faith is a word that comes up a lot in the Bible, but what exactly does it mean? Faith is believing and obeying the word of God. And today we're gonna be looking at how we can have faith in God's promises. That means that we can believe everything God says and we can obey him because what he says is true. Now in the Bible, we hear a lot of promises from God. You can read all about them on almost every single page. For example, last week, we learned about the promise that God made to Noah to never flood the earth again. He's made so many more promises and guess what? every single one of them comes true. And today, we're gonna to look at another promise that God kept. And this promise was made to a man named Abram. And God actually changed this man from Abram to Abraham a little bit later on. And Abraham, he was just a shepherd, but God was going to use him to start many different nations. Now in our story today, God spoke to Abraham and God told him that one day he was gonna give Abraham a son. And that son would one day have another son and this would happen over and over again until after a while, the number of Abraham's descendants would feel like they're as many as the stars in the sky. Isn't that amazing? There was only one problem with that. Abraham was old and his wife was also old and people their age they weren't usually able to have children. And Abraham, he had every reason to doubt God and not have faith that God's promises were true. But that was not the case with Abraham. He did not doubt God. And let me read these verses to you in Genesis 15 verses four through six. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him. This man shall not be your heir, your very own son shall be your heir. And he brought Abraham outside and said, look towards heaven and number the stars if you're able to number them. Then he said to him, so shall your offspring be. And he believed the Lord and he counted it to him as righteousness. Abraham had every reason to not believe or trust God. He could have said, God, I'm too old to have kids. What do you think you're doing with me? But in verse six, we see that Abraham believed the Lord and it was counted to him as righteousness. What we see in this story is that thousands of years ago, God kept his promise to Abraham way back then. And the same God keeps his promises to us today. And as Christians, we need to have faith in God's word. We don't always know God's timing like Abraham didn't know God's timing, but just like he came through to Abraham by giving him a son, God sent his son Jesus to save us from our sins. And the biggest promise for you and for me is this. If we believe in the gospel that Jesus died for our sins, was buried, and that God raised him from the dead. And if we ask for forgiveness for our sins, God promises us that we will be free from our sins and we will spend eternity with him. And that is the greatest promise ever. Sometimes it can be hard to trust, it can be hard to trust God's promise. Sometimes it can feel like God is taking longer than we would like. And sometimes we can feel like we do not want to believe and obey God's word. God always keeps his promises. And just like Abraham had faith that God would come through, we can have faith that the same God then is the same God today. And we can have faith that God will always keep his promises. So let's go ahead and pray. God, 
thank you for being a God who always keeps his promises. I want to ask that you would help us have faith in you. I want to ask that you would help us trust in you and help us believe that you will always keep your promises to us. It's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Wow, Mr. Cole, what a great reminder that we are rooted in faith. I know, and I am so thankful for that reminder. Boys and girls, if you are ready to surrender your heart and put your faith in Jesus who defeated sin and death for you, we encourage you to talk with your parents or kids pastor or minister so we can help you take that next step. Well, kids, we've been the church together. Now let's go be the church out there. And remember, we love you. But more importantly, God God loves loves you more. more.